Hey everyone, Sam here. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a sunset in a seascape that's inspired by the coast on the island of Guernsey. Now this is just a short video so I'm just going to be focusing on painting the sunset itself and how we can create that illusion of really bright light in a painting. Now if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're new here. Grab your paint and let's get into the video. The inspiration for this painting comes from a place called Port Swaff on the island of Guernsey which is located in the English Channel and was also the island I was born in. It's got some absolutely beautiful coastline and really inspiring places for painting seascapes, especially as there's lots of rocky shores, as well as sandy beaches and cliffs. The orientation of some of these areas is perfect if you want to paint sunsets as well. And this is what I did here. And what I wanted to communicate in this painting was the bright sunlight just before it disappears behind the rocks. Now as I said in the intro, I'm just going to mainly focus on painting the sunset itself and how we can communicate that bright sunlight in our paintings, as well as the colours that I've used. I'm painting on a 12 inch by 16 inch linen panel, and this is oil prime linen that's mounted to Baltic birch and made by a company called Canvas Panels in the USA. And I love painting on these just because they're so convenient, they're really durable and they're really easy to frame as well. And I just love that oil primed surface and the way the paint adheres to it. I'll sketch out my composition using a number one round brush and burnt sienna mixed with liquin original and I'm going to be using liquin as my medium here as I'm using oil paint. So liquin speeds up the drying time and it also improves the flow of the paint. Now once I've sketched out my composition I get straight into painting the rocks as these are some of the darkest values in the painting. And I want to paint my darks first as this is just going to help me to gauge the overall tonal dynamic within the painting and I can use the white of the canvas here in order to gauge my values. So we're going to find our darkest darks in the foreground and the darkest colours are going to be mostly in those cracks and fissures and occlusion shadows within the rocks and then many of the other tones in the rocks are going to be dark to mid tones. I'm keeping my colour mix simple here and in fact I've only actually used five colours in this painting which included titanium white, burnt sienna, yellow oxide, quinacridone crimson and ultramarine blue. Now by using a limited palette it means it's going to be much easier for me to achieve colour harmony in the painting because I'm likely to be using all of these colours throughout the painting, meaning that it'll tie all the zones together. So for the colours I used in the rocks here was mainly a mix of ultramarine blue with some burnt sienna and a little bit of quinacridone crimson and titanium white. The burnt sienna desaturates the blue as it's a dark orange and the quinacridone crimson gives the mixture a violet tint. When it comes to painting these rocks on the left side of the painting I've left a gap for the halo of bright light around the sun and this is what's going to make it look like the sun's leaping off the canvas. Next I paint the warm sky and here I've used a mix of yellow oxide with titanium white and some quinacridone crimson and this is what's going to allow us to create an orangey glow within the sky. As I come to paint the bright sun I mix in more titanium white and a little bit more yellow oxide. But I want to keep the value of the colour a little bit darker so that I can add some even lighter layers later on in the painting. I next paint the upper sections of the rocks on the left hand side, creating a halo of light by just darkening the existing mixture, adding in more yellow oxide and a little bit more quinacridone crimson. And it's painting these upper section of the rocks with the sunlight colour that's going to create that halo of light around the bright sun that's going to make it look like it's leaping off the canvas. Now if I didn't do this and I left the rocks the same values and tones that they are already we just wouldn't get the same effect with the sunlight and it would look a little odd. 
So we need to create a transition zone here within the rocks between the bright sun and the darker tones within these rock shadows. Now of course this bright sunlight is reflecting off the surface of the water so I can actually use that same mix that I've used for the sun and the sky and paint that in the water in the foreground. Once I'd established these areas I then started working on the sea and I've kept the colour mix really simple here and it's mainly ultramarine blue with a little bit of yellow oxide and titanium white and I've used these in varying amounts depending on whether the waves and ripples are in shadow or in the full sunlight reflecting the sky. One thing I did with this painting was to establish the whole tonal dynamic and the main zones within the painting during the blocking stage so it could provide me with a solid base to work from. Then I let it dry and then later on I started building up details in the painting so that I could get to the point where I could layer details on top of the initial layers and save my lightest values until the end of the painting and it's these light values particularly in the sunlight and the crests of the waves and the white water that's going to make the painting pop. Now I actually got most of the work done in this painting during the blocking stage so it was much easier for me to just layer on details and make adjustments to some values especially within the rocks and the ocean in the foreground. The main important thing is to not use your lightest tones during the painting, you really want to save those until the very end. And then when we add those final highlights, it's going to make the painting come alive. I was able to add more layers to the sun itself, and here I was using much thicker paint and much less medium, and just using titanium white with the smallest amount of yellow oxide just to communicate that really bright light. And of course white is as light as we can go, so this is our lightest value. Now I've already uploaded this painting onto my website which is just for showcasing my art. So if you're an artist or a creative and you're looking to make your own website then check out portfoliobox.net as you can use this platform to create your own stunning website to showcase your work to the highest standard. There's loads of different templates and designs for you to choose from and you don't need to know any coding as it all works through drop and drag. And right now Portfolio Box are offering a 50% discount for the first year on any of their plans by typing in the discount code SAMERP50 and I've put the link to the website and the discount code in the description box below. Now whenever I save my finest details to the end, as well as my lightest values, I'm using much smaller brushes now and it was just painting in those final highlights to things like the breaking waves, the white water and even some of the rocks. And then I finished up the painting by just adding a couple of seagulls to it, which I love adding in my seascapes because it adds more life to the painting and adds to the drama of the whole scene. Now if you want to learn more about painting sunsets then I've actually got a full length painting tutorial of this video available on my Patreon channel where I show you how to paint this artwork from start to finish. And I also have this video for individual sale from my website as well. And I've put all the links in the description box below. Also, if you'd like to learn more about painting landscapes and seascapes in general, check out the free painting resources I have on my website at samulerp.com where I've got lots of written painting tutorials as well as full length painting tutorial videos which are available as downloads. So check that out, I've put all the links in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed this video, have a beautiful day, thanks for watching and happy painting.